Welcome to today's video on the methods used for the confirmation of submarine kills during the Second World War. Join us as we explore the challenges faced by ship commanders, the ingenious methods used to gather evidence, and the imprecise nature of this critical aspect of naval warfare. Get ready for a historical journey that reveals the resourcefulness and the difficult quest for validation in the world of submarine warfare. During the Second World War, the confirmation of submarine kills was a significant challenge for ships hunting subs. Their targets were often submerged, and there were not always other ships present to confirm the kill. Furthermore, once the target was destroyed, it would sink hundreds of feet beneath the ocean surface, making it challenging to find and retrieve any evidence of the kill. Subhunters, however, quickly found a solution to this problem. When a submarine was destroyed underwater, most of its debris would sink to the ocean floor. Nonetheless, some items such as oil, clothes, personal belongings of submariners, documents, and even human remains would float to the surface. These items served as physical evidence for ship commanders to prove their kills. In Britain, it was customary by the Second World War to dip a bucket into the water and collect the soup of oil, seawater, and debris. The buckets would then be kept on the ship, often in the freezer or refrigerator if they had one. When they returned to port, intelligence officers would take the buckets and examine them to confirm the kills and gather additional information. The importance of physical evidence in confirming kills cannot be overstated. Some ship and boat commanders failed to receive credit for claimed kills without it. There were other ways to confirm kills, such as if multiple ships had hydrophone and sonar operators who heard the subs suffer catastrophic danger before losing contact with it, or if intercepted intelligence where enemy commanders discussed lost subs could be matched up with claimed kills. Nevertheless, physical evidence was the preferred method. It became so well known, however, that some sub commanders would pack a torpedo tube with random debris and then shoot it into the ocean when under attack. The bubbles from air exiting the tube combined with the trash floating to the surface could fool attackers on the surface, giving the sub a chance to escape after the surface ship left. Eventually, this caused commanders on the surface to prefer the collection of human remains that floated to the surface. Since it was rare for submarines to carry dead bodies, it was often a safe proof. However, it is worth noting that the confirmation of submarine kills was an imprecise science. After the war, governments exchanged documents, and historians and navy officers worked to piece together which ships sank which submarines. In some cases, ship crews saw an increase in their total kill count since previously suspected kills could now be confirmed. However, some who had previously received credit for kills later found out that they were duped by decoy debris, or that they had been credited with sinking a sub that had survived and limped home. So as you can see, the process of confirming submarine kills during the Second World War was a challenging and imprecise science that required subhunters to be resourceful and creative in their efforts to gather physical evidence. The evidence they collected was crucial for proving their kills and receiving credit for their actions. Although there were other ways to confirm kills, physical evidence remained the preferred method and allowed some ship crews to increase their total kill count. The challenges of confirming submarine kills highlight just a few of the difficulties and complexities of naval warfare during the Second World War, and the resourcefulness and ingenuity required to overcome them. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. See you soon.